Pet Pals TV continuing. Tom Dock, Noah's Animal Hospital. We're talking about preparedness in the case of a calamity or a disaster, whether it's a natural disaster or maybe a home calamity problem where your house is on fire or something, you have to leave. What do we do about our pets? Tom, tell us what we need to know. Well, this is a good time to bring this up. Thanks, Patty, because September is National Preparedness Month, and that goes along with the June month of National Pet Preparedness Month. So let's just talk about what can we do if we've got to leave the house. And remember that experts say if you are dealing with a natural disaster in your area, be it tornado, wildfires, whatever, you should be prepared to be on your own for three days, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you've got to leave the house, we need to be prepared to have you know, three days worth of dog food, three days worth of kitty litter in a litter box, cleaning supplies. Do they need their own toys? Uh, you know, a source of water. Um, you're probably going to want to have some sort of cage or way to keep your pet confined, whether it's a cat in a cat carrier or, you know, a good leash and harness for your dog as well. Mm -hmm. We've always talked about the importance of microchipping. Uh, mm -hmm. Should you like update it or make sure your records are, maybe you've moved, make sure that everything's okay with your records, right? Well, I wish I could scream that from the mountaintops. Um, <laughs> we are doing better about microchipping our pets as a whole in society. What we're not doing better is making sure that information is updated in the microchip company's database. Yeah. So when your veterinarian microchips, they'll send that information in. That's based on where you live at that point in time. But we know how often people move, phone numbers change, you know, you may be in a relationship and now you're not in that relationship anymore and the pet goes one way or the other. We need to keep that updated and more than 50% of our pets don't have updated information in the database. That slows things down tremendously, getting your pet back. And also you had uh, scribbled me some notes. One of them I thought was really good about have a selfie with your pet. You know, take a picture. If someone says, hey, you've got to have proof that this is your pet that ran away, right? Take a picture. But take a picture and keep doing that. You know, every year, make it an anniversary on the pet's birthday or in National Preparedness Month, you could do that too. Um, here's the big key with that is not only does that give you something to share, but then when you call that shelter looking for your pet and you say, I'm missing you know, Buffy my lab mix, the shelter doesn't necessarily have the same idea of what a lab mix looks like as what you think a lab mix looks like. And so oh. I tell people have the picture, be able to send it or Get down to the shelter yourself and check on a daily basis. Don't rely on somebody to know what your, your little pup looks like. Right. Okay. These are all great, great ideas. Uh, the Federal Emergency Management uh, Administration has a video that you can take a look at. Do you, do you know what that, that's about? Have you checked into that? I have. And, you know, it's a lot of what we've just talked about right now. So let's just make sure that we've got ideas of what we're going to do when we pack up and we bug out because of whatever the situation is. Where are we going? Are we going to grandma's house or do we need to go to a hotel or a shelter? And remember, despite Despite what's changed since Hurricane Katrina with the Pet Evacuation and Transportation Safety Act, we still need to make sure that pets are going to be allowed at the shelter. If it's exactly. a state-run shelter, probably, but if it's a charitable type organization, you may not be able to take your pet in. So yeah. you need to know that. Look for hotels. There's some great websites like bringfido.com, petswelcome.com that will help you find a hotel that is friendly towards pets. Okay. And go to our website, petpalstv.com. Uh, you've got more information there uh, in, in detail. Tom, you're wonderful. Now, what I have to do is take some more pictures of m myself with my pets because I don't yeah. have enough of those. Well, you know, Mabel, Mabel's pretty distinct. And as much as we love Stewie, you know, Stewie, Stewie is a good looking Bernese mountain dog, but right. there's a lot of good looking Bernese mountain dogs out there. So let's make the picture and, you know, have the ID, have the microchip. You'll yes. be good to go. Okay. Well, I'm not going anywhere without them. That's for sure. Right. Mabel, you're pretty distinct. She's down here going, what? what is, what's <laughs> going on? Uh, Tom Doc, thank you very much. Again, go to our website. He's got more information. Thank you. We appreciate everything you do. And we will be back with more on Pet Pals TV. Bye.